So now we have some laws of refraction. The first law is that the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal at the point of incidence, they all lie on the same plane. So the same concept as the previous law of reflection. If I drew all of these rays, you would be able to place them all on one sheet of paper or one plank of wood. The second law of refraction is the interesting one. For two given media, the ratio of sine i over sine r is a constant, whereby i is the angle of incidence and r is the angle of refraction. This is also known as Snell's law. Sine i divided by sine r equals to n, where n is the refractive index. So now let's show you what it means. Look at these three different refractions at three different angles. Let's call these three angles of incidences as I1, I2, and I3. And let's call these angles of refraction as R1, R2, and R3. If we use Snell's law, then sine of I1 divided by sine of R1 will be equal to 1 by 3, 3. However, if we change the angle over here and we had I2 and R2, sine of I2 divided by sine of R2 would equal to the same number. Similarly, if we change it again and made it even bigger, sine of I3 divided by sine of R3 would once again be the same number. It is a constant throughout. So it is actually known that the refractive index of water is actually just 1.33 and this doesn't change. Similarly, we actually know the refractive indexes of a lot of other things. One example is the refractive index of diamond. And we know it to be 2.42. And the ratios of the sine i to the sine r's of any angle all produce the number 2.42 if it is from air to diamond. So let's give some examples. For the light going from air to water, if the incident angle is 30, it will produce a refractive angle of 22.1. Sine 30 divided by sine 22.1 will give you 1.33. You can try it out on your calculator. The next one, let's say, let's say this was 50 degrees. It will produce an angle here of 35.2 degrees. So, um, sine 50 divided by sine 35.2 would once again give you 1.33. And the same thing will occur if this one was 70 degrees producing an angle of 45 degrees. Sine 70 divided by sine 45 will give you 1.33 as well. Same thing occurs for diamond. But you can see that because of the high refractive index, the same angle of light is shined from air to diamond, you will actually produce a much smaller angle. Therefore, a higher refractive index will actually produce a much smaller angle into the diamond. So the definition of a refractive index of a substance is the constant ratio sine i over sine r of a given medium when a light ray is passing from a vacuum into that medium. This can be vacuum or air because they both have roughly the same optical density. The symbol for this is n. The formula for this is n is equal to sine i over sine r. The refractive index of a substance will be equals to sine i angle of incidence divided by sine r angle of refraction. Note that n is always more than 1 and it has no unit. Now, remember that this case um, of sine i over sine r only occurs when it goes from a vacuum or air into a medium. Now, for interest, these are some refractive indices for some substances. Vacuum and air, you can see that they are both about the same. Water is 1.33, ethanol is 1.36, glycerine is 1.47, quartz 1.54, and diamond is 2.42. Diamond has one of the highest refractive indices. Therefore, you can see that n is always more than 1, and n can't really stretch for until more than, let's say, 3. So n actually ranges from about 1 to about 3. So if you press your calculator and you get a number that is lower than 1, you know that you are wrong. If you get a number that is much higher than 3, you also know that you are wrong. And there's probably something wrong with your calculator. Or you might have pressed from degree 
to radian. And the correct setting for your calculator should be in degrees when you calculate this. 